I will walk onto a stage that was just shared by Neil Gaiman and George R. R. Martin, having been introduced by Strongman. <laughs> Welcome to Woodstock 5.0, everyone. Thanks so much for being here. And sing to thee the secrets of the Celts in days of old. No back up. Oh. One night, with daggers, I did spy a brasser, a crimson hair. She fancied dog, and so he walked the skinnet then and there. Her stagger demo did a babs, she was a latty tax. Grand King Nora Gomi teeth, the saints they reeled the spat. You're from my town, too? <laughs> I have absolutely no idea what I just sang. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we may have just entered a common law marriage in Dublin. <laughs> and they sang something, 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 la da 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 da, la da da dee da da da, something, something, la da da, wisdom, la da 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 da, oh, something, something, la da 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 da. I love to breathe the open air. I love a pint of plain. I love to court the ladies fair. Killarney to Coleraine. But most of all, I love to hear me father's favorite song. Especially I love when everybody sings along. If you don't have it yet, we're going to walk you through it one line at a time. First line. Something, 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 something. La da 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 da. You sing. Something, 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 something. La da 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 da. La da something, something. La da da da. La da 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 da. Something, la da da. Put a bunch of sod down in our front yard. 
Before I get into the rest of this story, I should tell you that if there are younger people or those with sensitive ears or people who would be offended by the phrase, come slick Zamboni, now would be a very good time to take a roughly 24, 24 minute and 4 second uh, bathroom break. You're welcome. So we put a bunch of sod down in our front yard, uh, as one does in Southern California, and uh, stood back and looked at the beautiful lawn that we had bought, and uh, went to bed, got up the next morning, and the sod in my yard was rolled back all over the place, as if aliens or children or some other form of asshole had come around <laughs> to roll back the sod. So uh, I rolled the sod all back up, put it back nice and flat, made it look really good, tamped it down, stood out there with my hose, realized I should not have done all of this in just my boxers. <laughs> Fuck it, I'm a suburban dad, you guys. That's how it goes. <laughs> so uh, I uh, uh, waved to my neighbors and went back inside. Came out the next morning, same thing. Just rolled back up everywhere. And it's important because the roots in the sod need to grow into the dirt so that it becomes a lawn instead of a bunch of patchwork pieces of, of uh, sod and grass. Uh, so I wasn't quite sure what to do, so I went and asked my neighbors, you know, what do you do? What, what is going on? What do you do? And they said, it's probably skunks. And the skunks roll up the sod to eat grubs that are in the dirt. And I'm like, are you sure it's skunks and not hobos? Because that sounds like hobo activity. <laughs> um, they were pretty sure it wasn't hobos. Uh, but they said, one of my neighbors said, yeah, look, this is what you do. You go to the Smart and Final and you buy a jug of uh, red pepper flakes, like the ones that you put on pizza. And, uh, and you sprinkle them all around the edge of the lawn. And they, they put out this smell, and the skunks don't like it, and the skunks won't go past it. So do that. It's like, oh, that's great. It's a good idea. It's environmentally friendly. Uh, it's easy. And uh, it allows me to own, like, I have a legitimate reason to go and buy, like, seven pounds of red pepper flakes. <laughs> I love the spicy food, you guys. So I'm like, I could probably do something with this afterward. I bet it would go great in cookies and things. So I went to this, I went to the smart final, I came home, and I went out, and I put it all, and I'm sort of like, uh, it's like that parable of the guy who's like, you know, he's like, and I was sowing seeds here, and I was doing that there, and then this is the part of the Bible that says the gay people are bad. I think, no, actually, no, the part's not in the Bible, sorry. So I'm going around, sowing all around the edge of the yard, and I get a really nice barrier, sort of like a, 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 a sort of a wall, you know, and I realize that I'm playing tower defense against skunks. <laughs> spread it all out, I stand back, and I survey my work, I'm very proud of myself. I go inside, put the red pepper flakes down, and uh, realize that I have to pee. Oh. So, so I go, it's not a big deal, guys, everybody pees. <laughs> Look, I know they did the Everybody Poops book, which is great because, you know, you should, that's pooping's awesome. Look, the iPad has revolutionized pooping. I have gotten so good at Carcassonne. And I have two gigantic hemorrhoids. Uh, but I went, I went, into, the, went into the bathroom and I, uh, uh, I put up the toilet seat and I uh, began to take care of business, as one does. Finished my business, I flushed the toilet, and I walked out, and my brain goes, Hey, your dick's on fire. <laughs> what an odd thing for your brain to say to you. So I'm like, brain, I think you're confused. <laughs> There's no smoke. <laughs> and my brain goes, wait for it. <laughs> oh fuck, my dick's on fire! <laughs> so I run into the bedroom where my wife is, hoping to not be bothered by me. It's kind of her default condition. <laughs> Ann, 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 my dick's on fire! <laughs> She looks up and she goes, oh. <laughs> I realize that the reason my dick is on fire 
is that I did not wash my hands after I put the red pepper flakes everywhere. So I enter that phase of fiery dick panic <laughs> where uh, I, where this is like this is the only way anything is going to get done. No thinking is going to happen if I stay in the same place, and I got to I got to go, and I have to do something to take care of this. I have to put the fire out. What do I do? What do I do? Oh, right, right, wait. I remembered somewhere because I love spicy foods. I, I had eaten in this uh, uh, Indian restaurant. Oh, right, right. I remember. Okay, I had the jalapenos, right? That are like stuffed with a little bit of cheese, and they're amazing. They come out angry, by the way. <laughs> Jalapeno, when you shit, it cosplays as Wolverine. <laughs> I remember at the Indian restaurant, I was like, I'm gonna have the spiciest thing in the world. And they were like, haha, you're adorable, here you go. And I eat the spiciest thing in the world, and my mouth is on fire, right? And the guy's like, here, have some, have some milk, that'll help the, the thing. And I was like, milk, milk, I got it. I run to the kitchen. <laughs> grab, the, grab the milk, I go to the, the counter, I get the glass, I fill up the glass with the milk. And now I'm standing in my kitchen with my dick in a glass of milk. Nothing sexy about this. It's the least erotic thing you will ever see in your life. I imagine that this will be gifted out of context. It, it does nothing to quench the burning that has now spread to my balls on account of uh, transference and contact and whatnot. So now I have. My dick and balls are on fire, and I have this cup of spicy dick milk. <laughs> this is a true story. It's in a glass that has a happy face on it. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to, like, what am I going to do with this? Like, I can't just pour it down the sink. That's wasteful. I did not drink the spicy dick milk. I ended up putting the spicy dick milk in the, in the sink. Because I wasn't in my right mind. See, if I didn't still have fiery dick and balls, I would have thought, this is like the greatest practical joke in the history of life. It is like, it's ready to go. Like, it has set me up. I can make lemonade out of these fiery dick lemons. Like, it would be amazing. Um, so that doesn't work, so I return to my original plan, which was running around the house like this. I get a paper towel and I put it in like it, with the ice and the water and I'm doing this, which is weird, like, you know, as a 13-year-old boy, I tried to put all kinds of weird things on my wiener just to see what they would do, because that's what you do at that age. Strangely, uh, a frozen paper towel is not one of them. <laughs> this is a true story. Eventually, it just settles down. Like, it just, like, calms down after what feels like an eternity. I go into the bedroom, and I have learned, my wife and I have been together for 18 years, this year we will have been married for 14 years, we're very, very close, thanks. We have, that, we have that amazing relationship where we don't have to say things to each other, you know, like, like there's just, there's body language and there's like just this sort of connection just from being around the same person for so very long, and what was getting, what was coming off of my wife was, do not fucking bring your fiery dick anywhere near me. I will kill you. 
and I can't say that I blamed her. So I took my fiery dick out to the couch. We slept it off. The sod looked amazing in the morning. But, uh, skunks did not come back. And all I had to do was stand in the kitchen with my dick and a cup of milk to make it happen. So really the moral of the story, everybody, is when you put down sod, just go put your dick in a cup of milk and stand in the kitchen. And pour a little bit out for the prophet Elijah and you're good to go. <laughs> It's just between you and me. 
everyone knows he's a sex that God can't see. <laughs> it's hard to be as pure as me, to resist the urge to lose my vaginal virginity, to wait until my marriage bed, to give my husband my insulting pain in the head. So take your cock out, shove it in my ass, fuck me until you come. Oops, I mean, let's join our souls and unite our bodies and fly with the wings of <laughs> Whatever you do, don't touch my clitoris. If you ring Satan's doorbell, God can't ignore this. And no prophylactics when you put it in. Cause birth control's for slots and it's a sin. I've emptied my bowels and laid out the towels. I'm ready for romance. <laughs> now I'm praying with power that's the highest. But of all of my holes, this one's the driest. <laughs> But we can't procreate if we anally copulate. God's okay with sodomy, but only if you're straight. And I'm staying here no matter what. So I'm okay with everything but, everything but, everything but. Love, fuck me in the ass, cause I love Jesus. The good Lord would want it that way. And that sweet sensation on a rock hard rationalization is just between you and me. So let's not talk about how they live, hook me up, shellfish, polyester, and divorce, and how it can own slavery and killing gays, because those parts don't count, of course. Let's cherry pick the part about losing my cherry and mine, and for ambiguities, no missions to circumvent any real sacrifice, but still feel past my arbitrary parent and position. And don't you dare question my convictions, and don't look closely at the contradictions. Just focus on the sacrificial crucifixion, and have faith in its complete jurisdiction. As the only way to measure if you're good or not, and innovate, just up against logic, it's the only card you've got. So close your eyes, take a deep breath, and fuck me in the ass, cause I love Jesus. Jesus. Cause good Lord would want it that way. And that sweet sensation of an irrational rationalization, it's just between you and me. Cause everyone knows it's the sex that God can't see. Yeah, my chastity belt has locks. But sometimes you need to think outside the box. <laughs>